Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting and town hall meeting for December 20, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, audience members, and administration. Uh, Ms. Bernard, who would call roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nokowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Rogold. Here. And Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Councilman Cobb. Really Father, give us the guidance to do what's right for our citizens. Watch over our military and our military families. Watch over our first responders, our deputy sheriffs, our fire, firefighters and EMTs. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on, we'll need action on the council minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting for 12 6 21. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Roadwall, second by Ms. Eggleston, I believe. Any discussion, council, on those minutes before we vote? Yes. Sir. Baps Bar and Grill. Should be Babs Knievel and uh, number. Go ahead, the bar, the bar and Grill is misspelled. Babs ba Knievel. Babs Bar and Grill. Okay, how's it spelled? B a b s. B a b s. B a b s. Okay. Knievel. K n i e. Uh, K n e v e n. I think. Oh, I just heard you say, I thought you said Babs Bar and Grill. Okay, so Babs. Like Babs. Can't even. Babs Bar. Babs, and then the last name is K N E V. So it's Babs Knievel. Babs Knievel. Okay, just spell it. So Babs, B A B S. Okay. And then K N E V E N. Okay. Babs Knievel. Okay. You need to go okay. to the right. <laughs> Bar. Isn't there a seven in there somewhere? Oh, mercy. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, just just look it up on Yelp. Okay, just look it up. I never yeah. even found it last week. Like, I had not, no idea. It's that, not a real one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. At number 12. Oh, there's an S, too. It's Babs Nevens. Babs Nevens. <laughs> Bar and Grill. All right. It's Sorry. corrected. <laughs> And uh, number 12, I thank for the parking lines on Main Street, not the parking lot. And I'm still not downloading. We may need to share. Okay. I'm done complaining. Okay. All right. So, mm -hmm. with those changes, you can call for the vote. Okay. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 7-0. All right. And moving on to communications, a uh, couple items uh, tonight. Uh, we'll be doing a uh, t uh, the planning board application for yes. Ms. Terry Hoffman. Um, Mr. Hutchins, have you want to touch on that a little bit? On, I'm sorry, I, was, I wasn't even listening to you. That's all right. <laughs> uh, the, just, just kind of the, the scope of the planning board application. Okay, and, sure. And uh, yeah. what's needed and things of that nature. So we are uh, currently one hand, uh, one member short on the planning board. Um, and our BZA board uh, was down to one member, and you all have taken the duties over for that until we get a full board. Um, Ms. Hoffman was the remaining EZA member on that board, um, and after we discussed, it would, since the BZA is not in operation, 
it would make sense for her to resign from the BZA and apply for the planning board. Thank you. All right, Council, do you have any uh, questions or comments from Ms. Hoffman? Does she need to resign from BZA first? Yes, yeah, so she's formally resigned okay. from BZA. Yeah. Okay. Anyone, any questions for Ms. Hoffman? I need to do a motion to do so. Um, I'll make a motion. Accept. And we accept. Go ahead, second. Okay, so we got our motion by Mr. Vice Mayor and second by Mr. Roadwall to accept Ms. Hoffman's application. And Terry, I just want to say thank you for stepping up. I mean, you've been act pretty active with the city for years now, so thank you for helping us out. We appreciate it. I love my panel. As far as the time I've worked with her, very dependable. Yeah. Been, been to every meeting, so yeah. always count on her. I don't know if you know, Mr. Hutchins, she was actually on city council at one time, too. Yeah. She knows the loops. Well, I've heard the stories. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other comments, questions? Um, when you can talk for vote, Okay. Please. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nokowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. And Councilman Roadwald? Yes. That motion's accepted 7 0. All right. And then moving on to, uh, you know, we're kind of titling this as a town hall and uh, regular council meeting, if you will. So. Uh, what we'll do is, if it's okay with everyone, I know in the past what we've done is, is and most of you here know everybody on this side of the table, so but I think still just to go through it, uh, maybe we'll go from one end and just kind of introduce ourselves and, you know, how, you know just, just a little bit about yourselves and then if there's any, any questions or comments or anything like that. So if it's all right, we'll start with you, Ms. Nowakowski. Uh, I'm Linda Eggleston Nowakowski, and I've grew up in town here and I've gone a lot of places and landed up doing a PhD in uh, community development and ran for council and I hope that uh, what I've done so far in terms of helping set up the community garden and work with that and teaching English and citizenship to our Hispanic citizens. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Peggy Eggleston, I was born here and I've lived here most of my life. It were take a couple years. Um, been on council for <coughs> three years. I've enjoyed it. And uh, Hope to continue. I'm Dale Grimm. Uh, for 10 years, my son and I owned the New Carlisle News. I moved here in March of 2012. Of all the places in the country I could have relocated, I chose New Carlisle, and I love it here. Thank you, sir. I'm uh, Mike Lowry. I've been on city council for um, 11 years now, I think. Um, you know, New Carlisle is a special place for me for all kinds of reasons. I grew up here. I've lived here my entire life for 43 years. A uh, special part of my life started in New Carlisle because I was actually born in a New Carlisle ambulance, not in the hospital. I didn't make it. I was in a hurry to get here. So, <laughs> so it started off pretty fun for me. So, uh, but yeah, I, with, same with these guys. I just, I love New Carlisle. It's a great place. It's, you know, you can always compare, you know, New Carlisle to other cities. And, but, you know, we're, we're our own unique town. Um, it's, it's, for me, it's just the perfect place to live. It's not too big, it's not too little, it has a little bit of everything. So I'm proud to be here for the city, so thank you. Sir. I'm Bill Cook. Having served the last two years as your vice mayor, I think this council, without a doubt, has probably been one of the best that we have put forth in many, many years. I myself have had probably over 40 years of service to this community. And with the passing of Mr. Dewey Brosey, I guess I get to be the old man of the bunch. <laughs> but consequently, serving on fire division, sheriff's department, innumerable committees, and then also in council, 
I think this city is on its road to recovery, to doing a lot of great things, and hopefully that with this next council, we can continue. I'm Dan Rodewald. Um, like everyone else previously, I grew up in New Carlisle. Um, never moved out. Say it's like the black hole. <laughs> but uh, I was appointed to the board uh, about a year and a half ago after a vacancy. Um, I also sit on the uh, New Carlisle Baseball Association board. I'm the vice president there. I also uh, help coach football for the youth flag team. I'm also now apparently a second and third grade basketball coach for the Prince of Youth coach. <laughs> so, um, but like, like, like all others, I mean, I, New Carlisle is, is a very, very nice town. Um, you know, we're not too small, but we're not too big. We got a lot of positives that some people seem to forget. Um, it's just, I think it's time that we start to show those positives that the city has to offer. Um, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb. My name is Ronald Cobb. I've lived in this town for 50 years. Been involved in several, several organizations, fire department. Uh, my seat comes up at the end of or January the 3rd, and then I plan on sitting out there and raising cane again with the mayor. <laughs> so he can't get away. Uh, I'm not going to, I didn't run again because of health issues. So other than that, like I say, I will sit out there in the audience and raise cane with the mayor like I used to. <laughs> Good? Yep. I can't wait. <laughs> that's what I asked for for Christmas. <laughs> I, that's what I asked for for Christmas. <laughs> All right, Ms. Burner, we'll go down here, guys, side if you would mind, just kind of give us a little you're part of us. You got it. I'm Emily Burner. I grew up here in New Carlisle, born and raised. Um, been doing this clerk job for a few years now, I think. Yeah. Your that's turn. all? Yep. That's <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> uh, Derek Hutchinson, planning director here in the uh, city of New Carlisle. I uh, grew up not too far from here, Fairborn, pretty much my whole life. Uh, started to work with the city of Fairborn uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, spent about 10 years with the city of Fairborn, went to Marysville for several years. Um, then took a break from government, started my own company for a while, but uh, wanted to get back into the government. So I wanted to try something completely different. Started at the water department plant here. Wanted to do something completely different. And it was different, especially with this bunch here. Um, but uh, enjoyed it, but it, uh, it you know, it, it, it didn't take long to see the need and, and, the, and of course they come asking because I know my past. So, uh, so I've been here as planning director for two years. And, um, uh, enjoying it, and I, I do. I love this town. I don't live here, but it, you don't have to live here to love it. So, um, happy to be here. Okay. I'm Colleen Harris. I'm your finance director. Um, started my career in '98, and uh, not here, but at Miami County. I have um, worked for the city of New Carlisle on and off for almost 10 years now as the finance director. I love my job. I'm honored to have my job. Um, my husband and I live on a farm just outside of town, so we're very, very close, but not quite in the city. And uh, I just, uh, again, I, I look forward to the new challenges. Our budget has been increasingly getting stronger, and the town has been doing so many projects, and it's just wonderful to see it, and I, I love being a part of it. Uh, Steve Trusty, fire chief. I've uh, been the fire chief here since December 15. Prior to that, I retired from uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Fire Department. I've been in fire service for 43 years. Um, I grew up in, the, in Dayton, lived out here with my uncle when I was a kid. Uh, me and my wife just purchased uh, a home in the city two and a half years ago. Um, love the town. We love it here. Uh, I love the job that I'm doing. It's what I grew up doing. Um, and it's just, to me, it's fun. When it quits being fun, it's time to leave. And it's, Still fun to do the job. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I'm Deputy Harris. Uh, I also serve in the Army Reserves as a civil affairs specialist. Uh, been with the Sheriff's Office for three years. 
been with the city of New Carlisle for uh, just about four months now, officially. Um, but it's the best job I've ever had, so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Harris. Yes, he's one of our newer or deputies, but we're definitely glad to have him. He's uh, He's been great to get to know, and we're glad to have you, so thank you. Thank you. So that's um, kind of everybody that's here tonight. Uh, I won't go into too many details. I'm sure many of you know, um, may know the reasons. I'm not going to go into them here, but uh, Mr. Bridge won't be here tonight. He should be joining us again uh, in the future meetings, uh, but he is doing well and he will be back. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to you know, see and hear that he's doing good. So. Mike, no, if you don't mind, I have a, I have a, Kind of a little spiel from them. Yeah, I'll read out loud. This would be a good time to do that. Yes, please. That would be great. It says, no, I'm acting as Mr. Bridge. Hello, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council. Voice is too high. It is too high. Isn't it? <laughs> public, public and city staff. My apologies not for being here, being present at tonight's meeting, but I wanted to take this opportunity to thank every, thank everyone for the well wishes during my recovery. As some of you may know, in the earlier hours of Tuesday, November seventh, I suffered a massive heart attack that had a 12% survival rate, known as the Widowmaker. I am very fortunate to still be here on this earth, and I am thankful that my 99.99% .99 blockage did not leave me lifeless on my kitchen floor. As I continue to rest and recover, I have delegated tonight's meeting responsibilities to two administrative staff members. Yeah. Normally, for our year end, I write a lengthy four to five page document uh, about what we have accomplished throughout the year. This year will be an exception, but there will still much to celebrate in each of the department heads' annual reports. There's also much to celebrate in, in 2022, such as the mayor's court returning, more streets repairs, and more uh, elimination of blight. All these things and more will make New Carlisle even better in 2022. Thank you very much. I, I thought I'd remember him saying he was gonna put something together, but I hadn't seen it yet, so thank you for reading that. <coughs> All right, so we'll move on. We'll go down to uh, city manager's report, which is attached. I believe Mr. Hutchinson will go through it. Then we'll go into comments and members of the public. Anybody has anything they want to ask any members that spoke tonight or, you know, really anything you guys have. So um, go down to city manager's report. All right. We will start tonight with Deputy Harris. You want to take over the sheriff's report? Council citizens. Uh, Sergeant Lehman prepared our end of year report for the New Carlisle Division of the Sheriff's Office. Um, end of year stats have been tallied and compared uh, with all other specialized divisions in the sheriff's office. Um, these stats are from January 2021 to November uh, 2021, and certainly we will do a final end of year uh, in January of 22. Um, we can look at the stats in depth if you want um, compared to the other divisions, but. Um, of the calls, assist, reports, traffic stops, citations, warnings, and arrests, New Carlisle led in every single division. Um, for our new patrol car, um, the new patrol car is in. It has been striped by the Clark County garage. Uh, the vehicle is sitting in the Clark County garage's lot and is waiting to go to PNR Communications. Um, we've been informed by PNR Communications that they will call in January to get the vehicle started with the build process. Uh, so that will be coming soon. Um, as far as our patrol vehicle parking, uh, as of 2022, currently we only leave one patrol car in the city uh, as the other deputies live within the county and take theirs home. But in 2022, there will be two cars uh, sitting at uh, the city building. Um, so parking be an issue we'll see um, AEDs um, we've been informed that new AEDs have been ordered for all road patrol deputies um, most deputies have been working with limited availability to AEDs um, with battery issues but Lieutenant White with the road patrol division has ordered all new ones and they should be getting issued out soon um, for the end of the year stats, or at least up till November, um, deputies in New Carlisle took 1,831 calls, um, assisted other deputies and medics with 531 calls. We took 406 reports. We had 877 traffic stops, 314 citations, 
560 warnings and 193 arrests. That can be the report, unless there are any questions. Well, thank you, sir. Council, any questions, comments? I have a comment. Sir. 105 traffic stops of those two thirds were warnings, one third were citations. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, shows that we're not just out, especially starting our own mayor's court. Um, it, it shows that we're not just trying to use the law enforcement as a revenue generating stream. Um, and I'm sure the 36 people that receive citations deserve them. Um, but I think you guys are doing well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Council, any other questions or comments for the deputy? All right. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, now we'll hear from Chief Trustee. Council, citizens, uh, the, for year 2021, these stats are as of 12 17, 2021. The fire division responded to 1,590 incidents so far, and this is a 10% increase from 2020. Fires, uh, fire related calls was 41. EMS calls were 1,380. Those included fire EMS calls, lift assist, and those type of things. Uh, we, with far as mutual aid, we gave, was given 312 times. We received mutual aid from other departments 213 times. Uh, the contract that we have with Elizabeth Township, they had 275 responses for the year so far. As far as to the year, what the division accomplished, uh, we purchased a new staff car, which is a Dodge Durango. Uh, right now it's sitting at K.E. Rose waiting for license irons to be installed. Um, so as soon as that gets done, it gets back, it'll go to uh, Studio 10 for striping, and it'll, it'll be on the road. Uh, we also replaced all of our hydraulic rescue tools, which with uh, our spreaders, cutters, and rams, with battery-operated Genesis, Re Genesis rescue tools, uh, which increase the capabilities of being able to use them easier in, in different areas. We can, don't have the hoses and the hydraulics and all that. They're battery operated. We can take them inside of a building if we need to, that type of thing. Um, we also uh, purchased a, what's called a Kodak stabilizing kit, which is rams that we can sit on a car to stabilize a car if it's on its side, or in uh, stabilized walls, buildings, and that type of thing. Um, our, the hydraulic tools that we've had, had were past their service life, plus also they would not work on the newer metals of cars. Uh, we also purchased two battery uh, powered fans, exhaust fans, which we use to eliminate smoke and that type of thing, and also helps fighting fires with ventilating a building the proper way. Uh, we purchased two of those, and we also purchased some other smaller equipment, hand tools that are also battery operated, and all of the equipment take the same batteries. So it makes it, we can swap out every tool, the fans, power tools, everything, and uses the same batteries. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, we also purchased a elk lift uh, device, which is a lifting cushion, which if we have a patient that's down and we need to help them get up or we need to raise them so they're a uh, larger patient, uh, the lift cushion is safer for the patient and safer for us. Uh, we were able to purchase this by a, a large donation, paid for most of it, uh, from Mr. Lindsay here in the city. Um, it's, like I said, it helps a lot. It keeps our crew safe and first of all, keeps the patient safe. Um, the fire division was also awarded a grant this year through the state fire marshal's office to purchase and install a turnout gear washer. Our bunker gear that the firefighters wear has to be cleaned after every fire with a certain type of soap, a certain type of machine. Uh, and it was a $10,000 grant that we got for that. Uh, the Clark County Sheriff's Office, when it was, uh, before it was demolished and taken down, uh, our firefighters were able to get inside of it and use it and was able to log 80 hours of continued training, uh, practical training before it was taken down, which was good for us. We don't get a lot of chance to get inside of a house or a building and as we say play, we got to go in and tear up walls and tear up things and, and work uh, using the tools and equipment. Uh, one thing that is not on here, uh, on, on the report to add to it, is our training also. Uh, combining our instructors with uh, Bethel Clark Fire, fire Division, uh, we have just at the tail end of completing a fire level two course. 
which we've been helping teach uh, through, with them through Clark State and planning on in January starting a level one course that'll be a combined teaching class through them. Uh, all in all, the division has moved forward quite a bit in the past two or three years, especially this year, concentrating more this year on the fire end of the house, of uh, getting rescue tools and rescue equipment and getting the engine and ladder up to what it should be for, that type, for those type of calls. Uh, other than that, the division's doing good. We're still trying to hire, <laughs> still trying to get people, uh, and continue to move on. Thank you, Chief. Council, any questions or comments for Chief Chuck? Yes. How close to fully staffed are we? What percentage? Right now, we're, it's, it's hard to say that whether we're fully staffed or not fully staffed. We, we have people, uh, but you're also looking, you have to look and understand that we're running a 24-7 operation, 365 days a year, with part-time people. <clears throat> there is no full-time positions right now in the fire division. Even my position is a part-time position. <laughs> Um, so it's, you know, we're, we're always hiring people, hire, trying to hire people. Right now the pool out there to hire firefighters and EMTs, especially paramedics, is very, very slim. All the departments, even full-time city departments, are hurting trying to hire people. It's just education level that the uh, people have to go through, because our firefighters, once they get certified, it doesn't end. Every year they have to take a protocol test. Every three years they have to recertify their certifications. Paramedics have to take extra co uh, courses through those three years to keep their certifications. Mm -hmm. And that's all on them. And it's, it's just a lot, a lot to keep up. And a lot of the paramedics are seeing that it's more lucrative to become an RN than it is a paramedic. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're covered. By hook or by crook, huh? Yes, sir. By, by that and by mutual aid. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grimm. Thank you, Chief Trustee. Appreciate it. And moving on. Uh, next, we have the finance report. <coughs> thank you, Council, citizens. The finance report is for the um, month of November. So we'll start with the revenue. We took in $532,359.67 for the month of November. That brings our total year to date at $8,300,815.43. For the expenditures, we have spent for the month of November $716,140.37 for a total of year to date $6,838,643.78. I won't have the end of the year course until January also. But I did, did a little comparison of this time last year in November. So our revenue is over 438000 from this time compared to last November. And our expenditures are down 134658 nice. from this year comparing to last year. On our statement of cash, which is um, the money we have basically in the accounts, our beginning balance again at the beginning of the year was $4 million. $760,036.34. And with our revenue and our expenditures and some purchase orders we have outstanding ready to pay our obligations, our ending balance is $5,572,578.62. All the checking and uh, bank accounts are balanced. And I did a little um, overview also, since it's the town hall, for a few things. Our, um, of course, we were still covering with COVID in the beginning of the year, so our offices were closed and we were a lot of our, my staff was working from home and we were alternating. Um, we were working on remodeling of our office at that time in February and finishing up on the 101 building. March, our utility clerk, uh, we started doing some backup training she, with her upcoming uh, retirement at the end of this year. So we were doing a lot of uh, hiring and uh, of a replacement and doing the training. In April, May, and June were um, records retention months. We have a very large project of getting the inventory of all the records that were stored at the substation before it was getting ready to be tore down and the records that we had at the old cemetery. Typically, these should be done every year, maybe every other year. They have not been done for when I was here in 2014 was the last time we did a big purge. 
So um, it was an incredible amount of work, and I, and I have great staff and helpers that all helped, um, especially Vicki Taylor, who took care of all the tax records. But if you know what a banker's box size is that, that everybody gets their paper in, um, the first amount of boxes that we had ready to shred were 260. And we went through every record. We logged them. Some records we have different times that you have to hold them for retention, and some you can let go sooner. That was done in August. In October, we finished up with an additional 92 boxes. So that was about 8,800 pounds of paper that went, and they shredded on site. We watched every bit of it. So that was a huge project, and again, I wanted to shout out to my staff and others in the department for helping, and we'll finish up the rest of them the first of the year. End of the year is uh, just a busy time for us, and if uh, I think that's my report, I can entertain any questions. Councilman? I just had one, and we've talked about it before. Now that we outsource our uh, tax collection yes. uh, to in, in uh, Cleveland, correct? We're out of Cleveland? Yes, okay. CCA. Uh, you would, uh, would you attribute our higher numbers and our better financial position due to that? A lot of it. Our general fund was actually up about 25% in total, and out of that, um, the tax report was 12%. So the collections on the tax increasing versus last year was half of our whole general fund um, increase. So yes, the um, finally getting the collections, we had a lot of outstanding accounts that we never had the manpower to do to collect. So they're starting, and we anticipate that to grow yeah. as they are able to collect what's due, so everybody pays what you know their fair share. And yeah. And that's a great thing because I'm, I mean, I'm not a big fan of their forms. I mean, it's, it is, it's a little complicated and tricky if you've never, you know, if, if it's something you've never used before when you start paying taxes. But uh, the great thing is, for those you don't know, they have a lot of tools that we didn't have as a small city that they could, you know, they could find these people who were claiming X amount of dollars on their federal taxes, but when they come to city, they didn't report the right amount. So they can cross reference and check all these things and compare and find you know individuals or people who may like like you said weren't giving the share that they should be so it makes it fair for everybody so that's, that's great and we can help anyone if they have a need to call the office vicki takes appointments and she walks you through filling out the forms um usually once you've done it once it's pretty easy but we we definitely can assist also great well thank you for the report we appreciate it and then i'll take a motion to so second Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Grimm for the financial report acceptance. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. That motion's accepted 7 0. Thank you. All right. And back to you, sir. And uh, I will do the uh, director of a public service update. Um, he is he's suffering right now in 85 degree temperature in Florida so we will uh, yeah we just won't mention his name so 2021 completed speaker installations for downtown and pool areas speakers were utilized for various functions such as music and COVID announcements that was out of our care fund acts uh, care act funds uh, cost around 18,000 um, I was down at the tree lighting and it was pretty cool having that music playing down there and mm -hmm. stuff. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty neat. I'm hoping everyone enjoys them. Uh, completing striping for, completed striping for downtown parking. We have only received uh, positive feedbacks after the installation. Project cost was about $750. Completed Fenwick Drive between Scott Street and Kennison reconstruction. Uh, this project included new curb gutter approaches and new storm drywalls. Total project cost was $287,546, CDBG share was $258,791, leaving the city with a minimal, amount, uh, minimal cost of $28,754.60. Completed asphalt overlay project in conjunction with Clark County Roadway contract. Project included overlay on, of uh, Deerfield, Sunset, Cambridge Court, South Scott between Madison and Linden, total cost was uh, $111,353.30, and that was from the street levy fund. Madison Street School was abated and demolished utilizing the community block grant. 
uh, to abate the asbestos and demo the school around late spring. Uh, cost was $171,496, with the city share being $2,000 and $136. And an update I got from Mr. Kitko today, we will be getting a refund check for the $2,136, so it would, wow. it's gonna cost us zero. So that's a good deal. Uh, completed the Adams Street water tower demolition. Cost of demolition was $36,300. Road de ice and salt, we used 100 tons for the year. We normally bid for 300 tons per year. Uh, then, kind of a look ahead for 2022, performing more roadway resurfacing within the city of New Carlisle. Streets that we are considering are Falcon, Henry, Villa, Bell Oak, and Orth. Multiple clarifier repairs at the wastewater treatment facility. Continue to study ways to keep mm -hmm. investing in our current infrastructure to save Fourth costs street. in the long run. Apply and utilize grant your funds where applicable, increasing our efforts to improve the appearance of the city. Uh, and then he has a couple public service announcements. Stop flushing flushable wipes down the toilet. <laughs> I, I would imagine that's how he would say it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Place Thanks. cooking oils and greases in proper containers and trash disposal instead of dumping it down the drain. That's all. Yes. I will uh, write down any questions you have for him and give them to him later. Council, any questions for the uh, impersonator? <laughs> <laughs> you did that really good. With like the that? Flushable wipes. You sounded just like him. Actually, very authoritative. Yes, very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the big thing with the flushable wipes is we had a conversation about it before, I think, during council meeting. He says, yes, it may say flushable, meaning it will go down, and that's mm -hmm. about all it means. Uh, it doesn't dissolve when it goes through all the pipes and twists and turns, and it clogs up all the all the plumbing between the house and the, and the plant so and I guess he did say that if it, it is a blockage it's somewhere between your house and maybe right out near the street or where they can prove that it came from your house they can actually find you thank you hold you responsible and make you pay for the repair so um, yeah just keep that in mind that's it could be a costly expense so uh, but anyways thank you Mr. Hutchins we really appreciate that sir uh, moving on, uh, I think the reason why most people came tonight, the planning department update. Uh, man, no, no laughs or anything. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Gosh. All right, 2021 highlights. Zoning, 104 zoning permits, one rezoning. We had two planning board reviews, two board of, uh, two board of zoning appeal reviews. Uh, we collected $4,368.84 in zoning permits. Uh, and we uh, I'm currently preparing some new ordinances that will be reviewed by a planning board in early 2022 economic development we had 11 new businesses this year 12 new single-family dwellings 13 residential additions uh, three demolitions of blighted structures that included Madison School 210 North Pike and 311 North Church uh, the city la launched our uh, new website this year as well. Lots of new information. If you haven't been on there, check it out. It's night and day different from our old one. Um, Tool Lending Center, still going strong. It's opened all year round. Uh, you can get on online there. We have a web page you can get on and look at all the catalog of all the tools that are available. You could even now schedule your own pickup time and request them online. We've added new tools this year, gas powered chipper, garden tiller, electric chainsaw, power washer, carpet cleaner, uh, and, and many more. Those are kind of just some of the bigger ones. Um, the chipper, I tried out down there when I got it, put it together, it, uh, it's pretty nice. Um, this year we also installed GIS software for city mapping. If anybody has seen our old zoning maps, those haven't been updated since 2011. Uh, so now we used to be able to contract that out. Now we can make our own mapping and do all different types of uh, things from there, GIS and uh, it's going to be going to be pretty neat. Uh, uh, also, we purchased ten new picnic tables for Smith Park. Um, we, we was approached from the uh, library uh, who does reading um, reading classes out there or events, and I went out there. And we was pretty slim on on picnic tables, and the ones we did have out there uh, were not in great uh, shape. So I purchased ten new tables for that. Uh, I do have them, uh, already received them. We have to put them together this spring and we won't put them out until spring. Uh, purchased all new downtown Christmas tree ornaments and decorations for the city downtown building and the city offices. 
Uh, in code compliance, we went from two part-time code officers to one part-time code officer that works 30 hours a week, five days a week. Uh, we've got 575 violations issued, 1,098 code compliance-related activities performed, uh, performed 62 city abatements. Uh, we will be re uh, preparing to assess $35,036 uh, to properties resulting from these abatements. Uh, prepared new ordinances that will be introduced to council in early 2022. Uh, we've, in, in our demolitions, one of those was a nuisance abatement uh, demolition. We have eight condemnations that were issued. Uh, and then I just wanted to touch with our, our code officers uh, spent most of the year identifying kind of the worst of the worst of the properties here in town. Well, we narrowed it down to five. Now this is structurally, uh, this is not uh, necessarily items that might be outside debris or trash or cars. This is the actual structures themselves. Um, and so what we do with those is we condemn them. Uh, what that does is that puts a hold on them where they can't be occupied until they're brought up to code. Uh, and then they eventually go into a nuisance abatement. A nuisance abatement is where we, they're required to either demo it or we, we will go and demo it. Um, out of those five properties, um, three of those properties, uh, one of them we, we did move forward, the 210 North Pike, we did demo that one. Um, and then if you, I supplied pictures for y'all uh, of the, the two on Prentice. One of those was the house that was vacant for over 40 years. Uh, these two houses that were in pretty bad shape, I mean, anything could be fixed, but these two would, would have probably been ones that I would have, if, if I was involved, I would have probably demoed them. But, uh, but they were purchased, uh, and both of them completely rehabbed inside and out, and they are two of the, the, the nicer uh, properties around now. They, they uh, look really good, and they're up for sale. Um, so that's kind of a result of our condemnations and nuisance payments. It kind of, it puts a timeline on these, these structurally sound houses that are dilapidated and, and causing blight in our city. Uh, and it just, it speeds the process up, process up a little bit. Uh, so for to ne next year, we have uh, two remaining properties that are under, currently under condemnation that will go into a nuisance payment uh, that will go for city demolition uh, and then uh, more to follow. Uh, so we, uh, we will have a busy year next year. That's, that's all I got for my report. Um, I'll entertain any questions. Right, Council, any questions for Mr. Hutchins? Uh, Mr. Hutchins, I just want to say thank you again for the job well done you did on uh, making the, the city building downtown look just beautiful. I got nothing but positive comments on it. It's kind of like the a nice new bright and shining star for that area, so it looks amazing. So thank you for that. Thank you. Looks great. All right, moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address and try to keep it close to five minutes, please. I have to get ready. Hold on. Hi, I'm John Craybacher. I live at 307 North Henry Street. Uh, I'm up here to, again to talk about the community garden. Um, a community garden is a piece of land garden or cultivated by a group of people individually or collectively. There are many advantages to community gardens that they have on a community. It is the right for every person to feed themselves and the possibility to grow their own food. Normally, in community gardens, the land is divided into individual plots, and each individual gardener is responsible for their own plot and the yielding of the production of which belongs to the individual. And in collective gardens, the piece of land is not divided. A group of people cultivate it together, and the harvest belongs to all participants. Community gardens can be created on private or public land where citizens can grow fruits, herbs, 
flowers, but mainly vegetables. Around the world, community gardens exist in various forms. It can be in the proximity of neighborhoods, can even be on balconies, rooftops. Its size varies greatly from one to another. Community gardens have experienced many waves, three waves in particular, a major development in North America. And the earliest, the earliest wave of community gardens development coincide with the Industrial Revolution and a rapid urbanization process in Europe and North America. The second wave, community garden, was during World War II and World War I. They were part of what they called Liberty Gardens, or the Victory Gardens. The most recent wave of the community garden development happened in the 1970s during the OPEC crisis. Results of grassroots movement in quest for available land to combat against food insecurity. <coughs> the new wave right now was when the pandemic started. You know, the stores became less and less of food. And people were wondering, where is the food coming from? I hate to say it, but it's going to happen again. Did you know that 11% of the New Carlisle population, according to a recent census, is considered as low income? And that many people are right now hungry and unable to buy food. And that's evidence by up at the community garden on the second Wednesday, you'll see long lines of cars in second harvest, you know, giving out food every Wednesday. The introduction of community gardens are able to reduce the impact of food deserts in low income areas and allow residents greater access to nutritious food that is necessary to live a healthy life. Community gardens can mitigate some of the problems that plague urban areas. It can be a beneficial addition to many communities by increasing the availability of nutritious food, strengthening community ties, reducing environmental hazards, reducing food miles, and creating a more sustainable system. Poor nutrition and obesity are both challenges to low-income neighborhoods. Low accessibility to nutritious foods can cause health problems to residents located in food deserts. And New Carlisle has been declared as a food desert. If our, one of our, you know, luckily for Mr. Mack that he has opened, but if IGA closed, we have to travel more than two, three miles for, to, go, to go to the grocery store again. Community gardens can help reduce negative environmental impacts by promoting sustainable agriculture, reducing food transportation costs, and reducing water runoff. Humans, plants, and animals can all benefit from urban agriculture since it creates habitats and improves the ecology of the area. Many, a lot of our gardeners have created for themselves a kind of a social time. And we have gotten close together in a close-knit group. Many cities and organizations provide opportunities for residents to become involved with community gardens. The USDA's Cooperative State Research Education and Extension Service has implemented a grant program to help decrease the impact of food deserts in low-income communities. They strive to provide long-term food security by supporting local agricultural projects while also improving economic, social, and environmental problems. For successful programs, it is important that the community becomes involved with the project and to work with the community to develop solutions. A successful community garden is impacted by a range of local and state laws and policies governing access to land, zoning and land use restrictions, garden structures, gardening activities, and the sale and distribution of garden produce. 
local laws and policy can impact the success of community gardening efforts in many ways. By passing local resolutions in support of community garden, the community gardens, you know, and also in the planning documents. We have had a meeting. We've had a meeting with Derek, Randy, um, Mike, and Bill Cook was there, and a few, and, <laughs> and the board, you know, for the community garden. And we had a meeting together. And there were several things that came out of that meeting. And what has happened is that uh, after the meeting, Derek has issued an ordinance, a draft of an ordinance. And I appreciate him sharing that with us. But with that, with that ordinance, we have, we have decided that we can't, we won't be able to survive under law of that ordinance. So we revoked some of the sections that we thought would create, you know, conversation. And so, you know, Derek, I guess, didn't like what we wrote. <laughs> and he wrote back that it would not be possible to do that. So what we're asking for is a conditional use permit, which it could be very possible. And would, I think would satisfy us, would satisfy them, would satisfy the city. And I have looked online, and I was really kind of surprised to see that there is an application for a conditional use permit. And we would like council to kind of guide us, you know, or Derek, to guide us through this process of the conditional use per permit. So that's what I'm here for. Yeah, so, well, conditional use is not, there's not a conditional use for that use. So it would not be possible for a, for a conditional use. Uh, our codes state what is a conditional use in each zoning district. And that is not the conditional use in that zoning district. So you guys have been working, I mean, I was at, like you said, I was at the meetings. You guys have drafted a couple. Yeah, and that, I mean, just one. And yeah, I send it to, um, to Kathy, and she's distributed all those. But we still meet. I mean, that is just a draft, and we still have a lot of conversations before any of that. So um, that's where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can send out to council? Just mm -hmm. to oh, definitely, of, definitely. Kind of see what's being proposed from both sides. Yeah, and, and what I what I explained to Kathy in email, I'm sure you all seen it, is uh, zoning code. You can't write a zoning code for one specific person or one specific group. It has to be able to incorporate others that want to do this. So uh, this this code may not meet all of your needs and all your requirements. That's where you'll fall into your uh, your own rules and guidelines that you could govern. That, but as far as zoning wise, um, it, it's you know it, it's it, it goes to planning board. Planning board will have to approve it, um, but it is you know it's a it's a document we we'll have to have to work with. So uh, we still have meetings to go. And not I mean not everything is dead in the water. Those things that you you wanted, but um, like I said, this is it has to be somewhat general to allow other organizations or other people to do these types of things too. And when we limit it to just your organization, that may put out someone else who wants to do the same thing. Um, but there are some things that you will not be able to, to you know, like sales is one thing, you, sales will not be, would not be a permitted use in that district, conditional use or not. Um, it just wouldn't be permitted there. But according to the Ohio State Agriculture, as long as you do not cut your product, you are allowed to sell your products. And our zoning ordinance talks uh, overrules that. How can the zoning ordinance of the city you know, overtop the state of Ohio? It, it can, I mean, our, that's how our zoning districts are set up and in, in uses that are, are permitted in those. You have, you have the baselines that are given out nationally or by the state, and then you, city municipalities, their ordinances, uh, as long as they don't go lease less than what is, is governed, they can go stronger. So they would be permitted. Well. So what you're saying is we can't go less when it comes to an ordinance, but we can increase the mm -hmm. requirements. Mm -hmm. But you say you can go over the state laws. Mm -hmm. 
No, I don't believe that. Now, I've been on the council a long time, took the law, and that has never really happened. Okay. But I do think some other people might want to say something. Thank you, Mr. Craybrook. Ms. Murkowski. I, I have a question regarding the one acre. There are numerous places in town that would make absolutely fabulous community gardens mm -hmm. that aren't anything close to an acre. Mm -hmm. What, why setting it at an acre? I you're, mean. You're gonna have to have room for parking, your accessory structures will be one acre, it's gonna be pretty tight for you. The idea of a community garden, mm -hmm. if you had, we've got so many lots that the city owns that are in developments that didn't get developed, mm -hmm. you could have the people who live next to that having a garden there and you wouldn't need any parking. Um, I mean, to put that kind of a restriction on it is absurd. Well, anybody could have a garden on their private property. So, I mean, we don't govern. I'm talking about a mm -hmm. community garden. Yeah. I'm not talking about my private garden. Yeah. Yeah, well, when, when you get to, when there's multiple people using one lot, that generates multiple places to park. It, it's more traffic, it's more use for that property that it's not intended to do. So in a residential district, these are very hard. That's why it, it, what I drafted, I think, is very, very relaxed in a normal residential area. But, um, did you have something? Yeah. Please. Having been around this town for quite a few years, I can see the benefits of this community garden in providing food to a lot of our residents that cannot afford it. There are a couple of letters in here that reflect some of the food that has been donated from the community garden to Mr. Mack's store where it is provided free of charge to those people that wish to come in and take it. We also have the pantry where a lot of the food is distributed, again, free of charge. Again, if it were not for the community garden and what it stands for, <clears throat> and the volunteers that spend their time planting, cultivating, harvesting. This town could be a, I guess, supermarket desert. Sure, we've got a supermarket, if you've got the money. But I think that my term in the last couple of years that have been working with the community garden, the fact that there are a lot of people that came up to my garden plot and picked tomatoes, corn, other things that came out of that. There were a lot of neighbors on Zimmerman Street that came to my garage which was a free open market, no money. I'm gonna heartily recommend that council sets aside a work session, planning director, community garden, and work this thing out for the betterment of our city. I agree. I agree. Council wanted to make a motion to set the meeting. So move. First, I'd like to get. Well, but, you know, I'm not preventing them to go there. I mean, they this will allow them to be there and do what they're doing. Um, it just, you know, zoning. It doesn't or any type of ordinances. There's going to be likes and dislikes from anybody, and I, you know, I kind of feel like. No matter what we're going to supply, you're not going to be happy with unless we meet every single one of your your wants there. 
Um, we didn't have a problem at all with the original community garden until you know this one started, which is a lot bigger outfit, which it fits there. This ordinance uh, or a type of ordinance would allow it to go there. Um, it just has to follow the, the procedure. So um, like I said, we still have lots of discussions. There's nothing in code. According to your statement, there's mm -hmm. not enough parking at Madison Street. So Madison's garden's gone. No, not at all. It, it pretty, I think in the email, Kathy, that I sent there, it, it is, it would not, your, the original garden is legal non-conforming. So it, it can exist as it is, but if it should ever grow, or if it should ever multiply or start, then, then it has to meet today's code. That's how zoning codes work. Um, there's businesses here in town that are, I guess the old term grandfathered in, uh, that's legal non-conforming. Those types of businesses, until they change something or add addition or do something drastically change, they would then have to fall into today. So that original garden, yes, it does not meet, it would not meet that code. But it, as long as it doesn't change, it would be able to exist. Okay. Just like if it doesn't change, would that be grandfathered in? It would be, as long as it's as it is right now, not grandfathered in, it would, you still have to have that code. We still have to do that code. So with the, with the ordinance passing, let's say let's say let's say it passes exactly how it's written now. How that how that garden sits right now, it is it would be legal nonconforming. Um, it would be permitted per the code to be there, but the minute you change one thing, then it's going to have to, it's going to fall back and have to meet every thing. You still can't do sales there. I mean that's just not a permitted use period, uh, regardless if it's grandfathered in or not. Um, but, I mean this is a it's pretty in depth. I mean, I'll send it out to everyone so we can get a look at it. And I mean, this, we still have lots of discussion, but it's- So is there a reason for us to meet with you? And I'm not saying that there isn't, but is there a reason for us to meet until you guys find a path? I guess that's up to them. That's what I'm asking. Well, hold on, before, before the next person gets up, I'm gonna stop you. I made a mistake, Mr. Vice Mayor stopped me when I let John go. I totally cut you off from the rest of the city manager's report. Okay. Right. So did you still wanna go through that? It, it, uh, I mean, it, it's really topics. I don't have any information okay, really so, for those. So that's for us to, okay, all right. I'll let Mr. Vice Mayor go then. Council sets policy. Administration follows policy. Therefore, I think it is up to the council <coughs> to basically sit down and design this type of a situation. If we need to change the zoning, so be it. I do not like spot zoning. But in this case, it would be a conditional permit, a conditional zoning if this plot were to go back to residential so be it. But that could be worked into that. And that is my reasoning for asking for a work session. Both sides, council can make up their mind as to what policy they want to put into play. Okay. Um, I know before Mr. Vice Mayor asked to speak, you would made a motion to do a meeting. Did anyone council want to make a second or did we want to hear from Ms. Kraybacher first? before anyone made a second. Whatever. All right, please. Oh, John, can you come get this? John. No. Just pass that. I'm getting guys some homework. My name is Pat Kraybacher. I live at 307 North Henry Street in New Carlisle. I'm on the Charter Review Committee currently. Um, my background, my past is quite a bit different than most everybody else in this room. My parents, my dad was in the Air Force, I'm an Air Force brat, and that means as a growing up we traveled all over the country, east, west, north, and south. Um, I spent 39 years at Wright Pat in acquisition and contracting. I retired in 2014. Since then I've traveled internationally to Nigeria five times, to Haiti, and to Germany. And I have lived in New Carlisle 30 years myself now. 
Um, I have two ideas I wanted to present that have nothing to do with the garden. One, uh, then I want to talk about the garden. The one idea is, um, as the garden dialogue or lack of heated up, we started watching council meetings. And um, it's very difficult to hear several of you on any of the recordings. It's sometimes very difficult to hear Randy Bridge. Um, sometimes um, I think the, the microphone over here doesn't pick up. And sometimes some of your council microphones don't pick up. So when you guys are having discussion, you want citizens to participate. And we can't hear what you're talking about. And that's not a good situation. My sense is that this podium should be over at the east side or at the south end, and that way um, the camera can get the person that's speaking as well as, you know, council can see the person without having the speaker out of, you know, the, the camera. So that's one idea, the microphones and, and the location of this podium. The second one um, is um, that citizen inputs really are critical to the future of New Carlisle. And I think um, it was just stated that council's role is really to facilitate that communication, whether it's on the garden or any other issue. Communication is important. And citizens, yeah, we want to be heard. We want to think that we're at least listened to, maybe not agreed with, but we need a chance to voice our opinions, our, our insights, our research. So let me go to the garden now. Um, about seven years ago, uh, when I turned 60, I, I spent a lot of time in self-reflection, I guess you could say. And I realized one, th actually two big important things, but I'll talk about the one thing that I realized. I realized that food did not taste the same as it did when I was a kid. And so since then, I have been researching. I'm the researcher on the, the garden team, and I do that for my Nigeria work. You know, I research the internet for lots of different topics. but. What we now realize is that produce that we buy in the big uh, box stores has about 40% of the nutrition that vegetables had when I was a kid back in the 60s. And with that lack of nutrition because of um, big ag and the chemicals that are put on the soil and that end up in our bodies because we're eating you know, chemically produced food, um, it's not good for us. It's not healthy for us. So. Um, we recently connected with a farmer up in northern Ohio. He does all regenerative agriculture. He sends his produce, and we're going to start buying it that way, I think. But we are now organic buyers because we believe in that. So that's just kind of the realization I went through about seven years ago. And so since then, I've been researching. John and I have been watching YouTube videos, learning how to farm, how to garden naturally. Um, in January of 21, we took a regenerative agriculture class in Hawaii. Yeah, it was a real shame to have to go to Hawaii, but we did. We went to Hawaii and took this month-long course in natural farming. We're now making fermented natural soil inputs. We don't put any chemicals on the soil unless we ferment the natural ingredients ourselves. We're studying uh, plants uh, like the native garden, and I had a, a, a picture of it, but I think you all have seen pictures of the native garden. Um, and we've learned a, a lot over the years um, about soil health and the criticality of compost and mulch to the future of our ground. I gave you this um, handout called Kiss the Ground. This is the documentary that really changed my attitude. And I can stand up here and tell you I'm well informed. I have opinions about a lot of things. But when I tell you that my mind was changed, I'm just asking you to watch this 59-minute documentary. And it changed my whole attitude towards climate change. It also changed my attitude and informed me that we can make a difference. We, the growers and the farmers and the residents of New Carlisle, we can make a difference in our local environment and heal our soil. So uh, we handed out this handout to everybody that came by the um, community, the farmer's market. And we were trying to challenge them to get educated. And that's what we're really, the garden's really about, is the future, looking to the future and educating people. Um, so um, in 2021, we changed our gardening practices to implement regenerative agriculture, which would, does not use toxic chemicals or destroy the biome. We're building our soil to grow healthy, good for you food. And um, to heal our soil biome is one of our goals. Our second step is to eat healthy food. That's the challenge we were telling people. Go out. I don't care where you get your food. You might want to buy it from this guy up in northern Ohio. You might want to buy organic food at Kroger's. Wherever you locally grown food is really important. Um, that is all very important to your health and for you being healthy. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, community garden is very important to me as I assist John in the day-to-day. 
Um, he puts the yeoman hours into it. I'm sort of the sideline saying, well, what about this? I saw this on the videos today, and we need to do this. Um, so the future, we don't know what the future holds. I do know that New Carlisle is an isolated community. We're at least five or seven, eight miles from any other um, locality that has a decent grocery store. We are a food desert. Young people, for the most part, do not know how to plant or how to grow anything. John can tell you many stories about young people and their parents coming by and just the awe at digging up a potato and what that causes in children who, who thought every french fry came in a bag frozen and that's how it was you know, grown. So we have lots of seniors that live in New Carlisle as well. And, um, but the thing is, for the future, we are in this together. And the well-being of our citizens and the stability that we have, if you look at that nine-acre plot at Westlake, if there was a food crisis, you have a ready-made place to grow food, but we have to teach people how to do it. And so to me, it's a standby, stand-back procedure for the future. Uh, we need to teach young people and the rest of our citizens about natural farming because they can do it in their own yard, save the biome in, in their grass. And I recently took Korean natural farming that we learned in Hawaii to Nigeria to share with natural farmers over there who are subsistence farming, but also organic farmers in Nigeria. So my request is that we continue the dialogue, but we need to grow together on this issue. It should not be divisive. It is our future, and we have some resources at hand that we can share, um, and the, the ideas that we have for dialogue, but we need to have space for real dialogue. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hutchinson. I say we go to Hawaii, and all of us take that class. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yes. On oh, question. I'm sorry. Do you, you want to, you had something on what she had said? Uh, her and John vote. Um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody in this council that is against the community garden. But one thing we have to look at is the interest of the neighbors. The people in the Institute Garden. Didn't you say at one time you had received some complaints? Yeah, we can't have that. Oh, thanks. Can I ask that question? I don't. Oh, I can tell you. <laughs> um, overgrowth. Um, Over what? Overgrowth. Uh, I live right. I live right down the street from, and I see it every day. Um, I'm not against the garden. Um, I'm against. I'm against the scale of the garden. I think the garden has gotten too large for where it sits. Um, can, I, can I speak? Sure. Thank you. Um, it's it's a great it's a great thing. I'm, again, I'm not against it. I just think seven acres in the middle of a residential is 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 a little much for for what uh, what the people around there want. Um, I have gotten several complaints from people who live on spinning. Uh, who live on Wash, who live on Bayberry, all that, and Brookfield, all that are adjacent to the garden, um, that it at times becomes an eyesore to them. Um, they would much rather have seen it stay as a park, as a football field, or an open, open air um, for, the, for the kids than what it's turned into. Um, some of the structures on there looked uh, uh, what's a nice word to put here? Uh, a, a little rundown. Um, from my understanding, they're not permitted. Is that correct? There is no permits pulled to put. As right now, they would not be. Well, they wouldn't be permitted regardless. Um, so you ask for those complaints. Those are the complaints that I, I get um, regularly. Like I said, I live right around the corner from it. Uh, my mother lives right down the street. My sister-in-law lives right across the street from it. Um, the lady right here. And we have to look at their interest every bit as much as yours. Greg Nash, who lives right behind us, he says, I am for community garden. He says, one complaint, well, no, he says, what we heard, you know, it was a compost. He says, oh, no. No. <coughs> no, he says, I am glad you guys are back there. It sounds like maybe somebody complained. 
I can't believe somebody took issues on a technicality like that. Like I said, I mean, I can throw out names too. Yeah, I just choose not I to. I talk to everybody up and down, and has come to the community guard. Everybody and nobody that uh, complained. What? Sounds like. It's okay. But you complain. Hang on, hold on, guys, hold on. This isn't. This area isn't an open discussion. We've got to keep this in line with the rules of council. Okay, and so we still have a motion right, to have a work session right, on this. I know. So I'll get to um, Mr. Cobb, and then did you have something? Uh, Let me get no, Mr. Cobb. I think I made my point. Okay. Are you going to make any motion? Hang um, on. So Mr. Cobb, we'll get to you, and then we'll see if there's a motion for your yeah. original or a second to your motion. Sir. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. What we're arguing about here is a guard around resident, correct? All right, if you go after the community garden, you've got to go after every Tom, Dick, and Harry in this town and plant the garden in the backyard. It's no different. There's a big difference. If you're going to nail them because they're sitting there with parking and they're planting mm -hmm. corn, tomatoes, potatoes, whatever, mm -hmm. and then you got somebody that's got a garden in the backyard that's almost as, the whole backyard is a garden, mm -hmm. there's no difference. There's, I would but there's a big difference, Mr. Cobb. I mean, no plot within the city limits is seven acres. That plot is massive. There's not seven acres under being used for that. There's no intention of ever having okay. seven hold on, acres. Hold on, hold on. Are you finished, Mr. Cobb? Okay. Did you have anything else before I ask for a second for her motion? No. Okay. Is there a second for was it your motion, Ms. Nowkowski? Okay. So have a meeting. Is that against? I'm sorry. I just have a random question. Is it not a conflict of interest for her to make a motion on something that she is a part of? You're on the board? Yeah, I'm on the board, but... No. It's she, not. She I'm a citizen. A I'm on council. I can make a motion. Um, and, and, and with the pool stuff, you abstained right. mm -hmm. from voting. Yeah. Um, so, and I know we had this discussion and I think it was stated by, um, the attorney. Mr. Jeffries that you were allowed to vote and you were, I mean, but you chose to abstain as uh, you're your own council member. I will let you make that call. Do you want to keep your motion? Yes. With, okay. Does anybody want to second her motion? No, to sorry. Okay. And that's a motion to have a meeting with uh, the community garden members, uh, council, and Mr. Yeah, Mr. Bridge. And Mr. Bridge. If council. I would assume he'll be back whenever that meeting starts. I like, you know, I like Mr. Pico to be there too to see what uh, garden okay. members and administration. Yes, please. Okay. Um, do we want to? I was actually we probably would need a date in that motion. So my question is. Do you want to wait till the first meeting of the new year to set that? Because we don't know exactly when Randy may or may not be back. I just, it might be a little bit easier to set it come January. That's but that's your, that's your guys' opinion. That's fine. I mean, is that okay with you guys? You think that would be okay? Year. Just it'd be a little bit simpler to wait till the new year starts and find out where everybody's plans and settings are in case somebody might be out for vacation or something of that nature? Okay. That will give us time for Derek to send out the ordinance that he has drafted. And we can look and, over. So. And, and just keep in mind, it, zoning code goes through planning board. For our ordinance, planning board is who approves zoning code. Okay, so do we want to track our second and our original and just deal with it at yeah. the beginning of the year? But you really, can't, you really can't do it until the second meeting of January because you won't have a full council. Right. Okay. Would you want to retract it? Yes. She did. She okay. said it. Okay. So we'll retract it. We'll deal with it early, the earliest part of January as we can. So and set it up. So and still, in the meantime, I'm still 
you know, even if it's pushed to the end of January, it still can't prevent us from meeting still right. to do a pre-meeting before that. So, I, like I said, I'm, I'm I'm trying to help. I just we just need to continue. Nothing is there's nothing in ordinance yet. So we just like you said, keep up the com uh, communication. And you're going to email us what you wrote, what John wrote. I'm sorry. You're going to email us what you wrote and what John wrote. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're still under public uh, comments. Anybody else that has not spoke? Can we put the yeah, it is your choice, but there is a camera. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> we know. You know. Put the clock on her. Brandy Mullet, 522 Hamilton Avenue. I 100% don't want to drag this community garden thing out any further than it already be has been, but I do, I just have a question. Is there a need, given the size in, of the Westlake property, is there a need to keep the plot at the Madison property? And does having that there, could having that there potentially impact any future development of that now empty? The one at Madison? Yes. I think I know the answer. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, if whatever council ends up per deciding to do with that property, if it sells, then that garden would, would right. then lose its. But it would have to go. Yeah. We have a memo of understanding that says if the if that property sells and that's going to be part of the sale, we have to take it. Okay. Yeah. That's a memo. Of, a memo of yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Ma okay. That's my only question. Thank you, you ma'am. Anyone else? Sir, I'll get to you next, Janelle. I see a podium, but that's okay. Oh, Terry. I'll make this as short as possible, but I'm here representing Ohio State University Extension and the Master Gardeners of Clark County. I've been hired on a stipend to help all the community gardens in Clark County. Real quick, sir, can I get your name for the record? I forgot. <laughs> Terry Frederick. My name is Terry Frederick. My background <laughs> is very extensive in agriculture <coughs> and horticulture. Not sure if I need to go into all of it, but I have worked in agricultural jobs. Grew up in a farm in northern Ohio. Went to Ohio State University. This is a very short version. Graduated in agronomy. Um, had a job at uh, South Charleston at the seed plant called Landmark at that time. Um, worked for even a chemical company called Roman Haas. I'm here to state that I did read the draft and I can tell you it sounds very restrictive knowing community gardens. I made a comment that if I wanted to start a community garden in New Carlisle, I'd look for something outside the city limits. I think it is up to you guys. If you want something welcoming for community gardens, which I'd look for youth being particularly maybe in the future, or do you want to discourage it? I don't know if I can entertain questions, but I did read it and found it interesting. I am a coordinator of two very large gardens in Springfield. One produces over five tons of produce. Yes, we have a market. And we're told that it's better than any market in Yellow Springs or Springfield. Can they be done well? Yes. I think it's up to you guys. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson. Do we have a farmer's market? Yes. Okay, so, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic. What is the purpose of the farmer's market? Sell your produce. I mean, so well, that, so we it's have. It's clearly not to get produce because we're the only produce providers at the farmer's market. Uh, it is now. This last year, there was nobody there. Yes, there was. But that's also controlled by two other produce, people sell produce. Okay. So, well, so that's just where I'm going. I mean, yeah. we have opportunities for the purpose of what a, a farmer's market, I believe, is. 
Um, and we do have land in the city that is zoned agricultural that these that they can do exactly what they want on. Um, so it's it's not restricting. It's restricting because it's in a residential area. And right. uh, I, I've been writing code for a long time, and and, and I know, like I said, it, there's and really what what you all you know propose. There, there's just a few things really that is different. There's, it's not it's not a lot of things. Uh, uh, so it, I think we get there. It's, it's going to take definitely some some discussions, but uh, you know, I. I and if I one, where are the two markets in Springfield? Where where are they located? Well, we uh, two different gardens. Uh, actually, I work at three. One is the uh, master gardeners uh, garden at, in Snyder Park, but uh, one at Grace Lutheran Church, believe it or not, is five acres. Um, it produces <coughs> five tons. It is presented there as a church and open to the public. And wh where's, what's the address in that? I'm not, Pardon me? Where, where is it at? It'll be in Saint, on St. Paris Pike in Springfield. Okay. It's in the city limits. The other garden is uh, set up totally different. It is what's called an allotment style garden. I think John talked a little bit about how that works. Mm -hmm. uh, people, it has over 70 participants. Yes, on the south side of Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, it produces more than what they can individually use. I think most people find that out. Even a small plot of 15 by 15 produces a lot of produce. And the excess goes to Springfield Farmers Market. It also can go to uh, outreach. So now, do both locations have uh, retail sales or just the one on St. Paris? Both locations have retail sales or just the one on St. Paris Pike? Just the one on St. Paris Pike. If that's what scares you, I would encourage you to look at that unaltered produce by the Power Department of Ag, which you can get a permit pretty easy. And they tell you that you know that doesn't even have to be inspected by the Department of Health. It's unaltered produce. No, what scares me is actually the, the, the influx of, what scares me is the influx of traffic over there. The traffic? Yes. Traffic scares you. Yes. Okay. Where that's at? Yes. I mean that's in a residential area. Roads are already tight. Um, they have a lot of residents who park on the street, so while the streets are wide enough for two cars typically you don't get one down it. Um, well, obviously I can't so, really no, no. say anything nope, about I understand. That. Uh, I'm just saying that it, it, it looked pretty discouraging to me. That's all. Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll wait the whole judgment until I see the ordinance. And, the and, and gardens in Springfield operate either with a special use permit or with uh, zoning to uh, what's called community centers. And uh, so you guys, I guess, I have to work out the details, but I'm just telling you that it looked pretty discouraging to me. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rodel. Anyone else? Right. I'm on the garden too. I have somebody else okay. on the top. Yeah. yeah I, I'm Whoever wants, I, yeah. I'm fine if you're speaking. Just please go to the podium so we can get it on record, please. Okay. Name and address. I, I'll, you want to talk first, or mine's kind of the end of the future. <coughs> I was just going to talk as a person, just as a volunteer there. Um, my name is Amy Hall. I'm a retired teacher from Tecumseh Local. I've uh, been in the area since 1980. Uh, we live right on the outskirts of New Carlisle. So really, my husband and I, we raised three boys. My son lives right in the city right now. So I have a real strong interest because my grandchildren are attending Tecumseh Local Schools. I've been working with John and Pat this summer. I wanted to do something um, that I felt like was a good thing. And I thought working for the volunteering for the community garden was, you know, the thing to do. I love gardening. I don't see a problem. I, I personally think the garden is a place of peace and harmony. Uh, I worked a lot on the native garden uh, while <clears throat> Pat 
was in Africa pulling weeds and I'm telling you, it was absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if you had an opportunity to come out to the garden and Mr. Me? Yes. Yes. yes have, you, have you actually walked into the garden and literally strolled around? Multiple times. Okay, around then, the bill, bill then you probably noticed the monarch butterflies and the beautiful gold yep. finches that were flying around. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot and it's a beautiful place for a garden and to produce food for the community. I worked at the farmer's market. I watched people come up to us, pat, inform them about kiss the ground. We had a young family that had absolutely no idea how to grow food. They started to come out to our garden, started raising their own food, even started a garden in their backyard because of the knowledge that they found from the garden. It's an educational place. Yes, I, I, I think you're, you're, I'm not against the garden. I'm against you are though. I, I'm listen, I'm sitting there that the garden has and I'm hearing all, all negative from you. As, as a person just sitting here in the room and going to the meeting that, that I went to at the library and listened and read over the ordinance that you provided, absolutely, it, it was negative. Why well, I have not seen the ordinance, so I cannot, you know, respond But to you are responding as a neighbor that you don't like the way it looks. I don't. I think it's gotten vastly... Well, have you came out and, and volunteered any time to help out? Why would I volunteer in a garden I have no purpose in? I have other... I mean, I Because it's for the community. I it's volunteers on my list. Well, um, you know, maybe if we had more people that would put more time into their community, it would be in tip-top shape. But John... And Pat, you are so lucky to have these two citizens dedicate the time that they do in this garden and give the knowledge that they have even given me to learn about organic gardening and how we can literally be healthier people in this community. And I've watched senior citizens working very hard in that garden. And it's, I, I don't know how else to explain it to you. It is, it would be an awful thing to take away from the city. That's all I can, I, I just want to share the fact that it's one of an, it's an asset. And I would be very sad to see it go away. Yeah, Ms. Hall, I, you know, I'm going to, touch base on what Mr. Grimm said, and we, and we need to move on from the subject. We've been on it for almost 40 minutes. Um, you know, Mr. Grimm touched on it, and I disagree with saying Dan is being negative on it. He's not being negative, but you've got to think he has to be fair to not only you, but to the people that live in that area. And I know that there's there's some that even, I'm not even going to say where they live, but there's, there's people that are directly involved with the city on the fire department. That have issues with that garden. I mean, there's multiple. It's not one. It's not two. It's, it's I, handful. All the so, days that I've been there, there's never ever anybody came up to me and said, "This is a terrible, horrible thing. Why are you doing this?" Yeah, I, it's so. I, I'm just totally amazed I, that anybody would complain about. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not understanding what what they don't like. I mean, I can't ask you to understand why they don't like it. I mean, it's not my place. I mean, he said something about the structure. Are you talking about the hoop house? The the um, the greenhouse structure. That's the hoop should, house. It should have a permit to be there. Hold on, please. I didn't know anything about that because I I'm just a volunteer and I'm not right. sure. Yeah, but from what I understand, and I'm just going off of what I was told by Mr. Bridge, I think is who told me that, that the city requested to have a permit for that to be turned in before it was ever put up, and it wasn't. So, and, and I'm just going, and again, John, I'm just going off what I've been told. So, let's move on. I don't understand. Let's move on from this subject. I, I'm sorry. I, no, I'm no, no, trying no. to understand where the yeah, problem is. I think we need to go back. Is it just the hoop house then? That's the problem? 
rodents, the, the structure. Was it there? Rodents. Can you define rodents? Raccoons, skunks. Yeah, any possums. possums, thank you. Okay, there, we're, we're in a rural community. I there. understand. Thank you. Stop, okay guys, stop please. Okay, Ms. Eggleston, comment, I'm gonna to go to Mrs. Wright and then we're gonna move on. We applied for a permit for the greenhouse and it was returned to us and said we didn't need it. Okay. So it was denied. No, that's not what it was. It was not denied. Okay. Anything well, else? it sounds like there's other right. issues that, but I'm I'm finished. Okay. He's going to the restroom. Miss, thank you, Miss All. Miss Wright. Yeah. Very good answer. You doing all right? Merry Christmas. That's the first thing I wrote here. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> I'm the ghost of the community garden's future. This is the way I wanted to look at it. I see the community garden. Kathy, I'm sorry, your name. Kathy Wright, Thank I'm you. sorry, I assumed I'm bad. It's 323 South Scott Street here in New Carla. And so I'm the ghost of the community garden's future. It's of what could be. That's what I think we're missing in this picture. What we have is great, but what we could have could be a fantastic thing for the citizens, for our school, for the parents. For everybody. If we are allowed to grow and to bloom, it's the right, if the right course of action is taken. Being pigeonholed into a small slot is not going to help the garden grow and bloom. Because I don't see it just as a community garden. It's community. What I see is community. I have a garden at my house. I don't garden at the community garden. Many, many people do. But if there was a place there that I could call my own, a bench I could sit, the birds I could watch, bird houses, bird feeders, things like that, paths through, it's all stuff we can have. But anyway, simply put, the community garden is a population living and interacting with each other in a particular environment. It's that particular environment I want to talk about. We're very fortunate to have such a large garden. I disagree with those who say it's too big. I think it's perfect size because it sits in the middle of Silver Lake Estates, better known as Willowick, Northwood, everybody knows about Northwood, Carlisle Estates, very large area there too, and the Westlake, whatever that's called, section. But anyways, that's walking distance for more than half of our people in our community. If need be, they could all go there and garden, and that would be great. So it could be as strong as our entire community, the strongest part of our community. But anyways, I'd like to see back to nature for more people than just us, for more people that are just sticking their hands in the dirt. I want people to be able to join and meet together there. I'd like to see the partnership with the school for our children's future. That's to me the biggest thing. I think as the years roll by, there'll be an even larger probably participation between the school and our community. The garden can provide an after school program. We can follow along with the children's curriculum in the school. We could actually have a huge shelter house with a kitchen, with a bathroom that would serve the children of our community. It could also be rented and serve the citizens of our community. I think if we use our imagination and we start thinking about a big picture instead of this tiny little box to fit in, we can't grow in a little box. Nobody grows in a little box. I want everybody to think about the big picture. Kids could walk from elementary school 
to the program there. They don't have to go there. They can still stay with the babysitters in the gym. But if they want to come there, if their parents want their children there, they could benefit from the garden surplus too. Uh, it, it just, to me, I don't think that would cost the parents much to do a program like that. Because with the money we do earn, we would put it back into the children, just like all the money that we earn, that we don't really earn, but we always put it right back. There's not any surplus of money. I think that program could be free for people. I think the kids could learn a lot. I think it would be a wonderful addition to our whole community, and it's big enough for that. And it's a wonderful opportunity. It is the school's property already. They love our partnership there. I think this would be a great partnership. And that's it. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Ms. Wright. Okay. Right. Anyone else? Public. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I just wondered if they ever have meetings where you can just go and talk and share your ideas without having to break council rules and things? You mean council or the garden? Just any kind of meetings where the community can get together and share their ideas about what they like and don't like. And besides just a council meeting or besides just a legal rule meeting where you're allowed to talk without oh, getting up to a yeah. podium or something yeah the uh, the only thing that I guess you would be referenced I think you've been there is the you're talking about like the um, donuts oh, council. Yeah, donut. thank you the coffee and donut the council is where we can speak freely if that's what you're referring to we've had some uh, guard members show up to it as well but, okay. you know something like that it's just an open there's no there's no uh, recording of it or anything it's just yeah where you just, just go and talk and share ideas and yeah. She had some wonderful ideas. That sounded great to me. I really enjoyed listening to that. That was really wonderful. Yep. So I think it would be a good thing. It's just, sometimes everything just seems to be so complicated, but I guess that's just the way it is. But yeah. I just wondered if there was any time where people can get together and do that. Yeah, that was actually, I think, Mr. Vice Mayor and Ms. Eggleston's idea to start that, which was a great idea. We, we didn't have a lot of them recently because of COVID, but uh, you know the ones that we have done, I think they were great. So. We try and put those dates out ahead of time so people can join in. So thank you. All right, anyone else public speaking? All right, and moving on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, service report. Or, no, I'm sorry, hang on. Oh, I'm on the city manager report. I'm sorry. I was on the wrong page. That's uh, Premier reports done, resolutions done, ordinances. Ms. Berner. Okay, our first one. Um, I do have a quick question though. Last meeting, did Randy, for this motion, um, for the first one, does it replace 20, 2152? Yes. Yes. Okay. Ordinance 2021 48, public hearing in action tonight, and ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained and New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-01. Council? This is ordinance that we wanted to die with that. Yes. All right. All right, so that one dies for lack of motion. Moving on, ordinance 2021-49, and ordinance creating funds for unclaimed funds. Council, So move. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. And I can uh, do the brief summary on that. Um, the amount of checks that um, have never been returned or lost in the mail and not cash, we have to set up a separate fund for that and we hold that money and still try to find the people that they were um, wrote to. If not in a calendar within the five years, then it goes back into our general fund and then we can reallocate it. So we are setting up new funds, one for our payroll, one for the regular, and that's the ordinance doing the approval to set those two funds up. Right. Council, any questions? Right. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay, Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yeah. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. 
Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That motion passes 7-0. We have Ordinance 2021-50, Public Hearing and Action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 438 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle to address the use of occupant restraining devices. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Cobb. Okay. So basically what this was is, is we did not have in our city ordinances anything requiring restraints. We've always used the Ohio Revised Codes uh, or, or the, the, the National Code. So this is just putting verbiage in our <coughs> requiring the restraints. All right. Council, any questions? When you're ready, please. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. And Councilman Cobb? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2021 51, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio for police protection within the city limits of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Anderson. And this, this ordinance is pretty much what it, so it says there in the heading. It, uh, we don't have our own police force, so we contract out to Clark County Sheriff's De uh, Department. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments? Yes. Sir. Mr. Mayor, I would move that we amend, uh, edit this, amend this ordinance by replacing the Sheriff of Clark County, Ohio with the Clark County, Ohio Sheriff Department. Mm. Reason? What's the? Oh, I have. Can you say it again? I have my reason. No, no. I mean, can you say what oh, you wanted to change? We amend, <laughs> re, uh, replace the sheriff of Clark County, Ohio, with the Clark County, Ohio Sheriff Department. Okay. So you made a motion to change that? Yes. Is there a second? no second to do so can we ask he said he Asking had the reason the I'd like to know what the reason is I'm not seeing a big difference here I would rather not say in a public forum mm -hmm. let it go. Mm -hmm. so it dies of a lack of a second motion so you can call for the original motion. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? No. That motion passes six to one. Oh, Councilwoman Eggleston, sorry. I filled in your box on accident. <laughs> So I skipped yes. you. I, my apologies. And you said yes. Yes. Okay. So yes, it does pass six to one. Twenty twenty one dash fifty two ordinance twenty twenty one dash fifty two public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance twenty twenty one dash zero one. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor and Ms. Hamilton. Okay. And the explanation on that is the ordinance that died did not have the um, general fund 30,000 for the utility software added. It was introduced at the last council meeting as a resolution that changed the capital to approve the utility software, but it wasn't added on my supplemental. We missed that. So this also puts it in the budget so we can purchase it. So it, it's, the first one was amended and died because it wasn't included. This one includes it. This also has all the adjustments to make sure that our books balance with the auditors at the end of the year. Right. Council, any questions or comments from Ms. Harris? And when you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. 
Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That motion passes 7-0. Uh, we have ordinance 2021-53 public hearing in action tonight an ordinance establishing compensation for the city manager of the city of new carlisle so moved we'll go with the motion by Ms. nokowski and second by Ms. eggleston ordinance 2021-53 is ordinance establishing compensation for the city manager of new carlisle uh, this would be an increase uh, in salary for the city manager Council, any discussion or questions, comments? Right, when you're ready, please. Thank you. Councilman Nokowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? I'm going to get Mr. Uh, Bridge. Yeah, Bridge, a heart, another heart attack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry. Too soon, maybe? <laughs> uh, too soon, maybe? <laughs> yes. Councilman Grimm. Ron, you realize your his blood is on your hands. <laughs> yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That motion passes 7-0. And he will have another heart attack on that one. <laughs> Give him a good Christmas present. <laughs> Ordinance 2021-54, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on January 3rd, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Clark County Sheriff's Office for fire and EMS dispatching services. Would you like me to read other business? If you'd like, please. Additional city business. Um, there, it is open discussion for city related matters and the city offices will be closed Friday, December 24th and Monday, December 27th to celebrate Christmas. All right, thank you. Um, I just had a couple things I need to go over. Uh, when we roll into the new year in January, uh, we will have potential, not potential, we will have, there's three, there were three seats up for re-election this year, actually two seats for re-election and Mr. Cobb decided not to run. So um, there were mistakes made on a couple of council members paperwork when they decided to rerun for council. So their seats were completely open and not enough people ran to fill those seats in the election. So there's only two seats open. Right, two, and then you decided not to run, correct? Right, but you got Mr. Uh, Lindsay was elected. Right, right. So. Um, so what will happen come January, we'll start the process because uh, Mr. Bill Lindsay will return to council and then we'll have two seats for Ms. Eggleston and uh, Mr. Vice Mayor that will become vacant. We will start the process of uh, going through and uh, putting out, you know, accepting applications for those seats, uh, interviewing people and appointing some of the council uh, very early on in come January. So that will be something that, to be on the lookout for uh, some changes on council. Um, but before, um, I hand it over to anyone else that wants to speak. I just, first off, I wanted to say uh, thank you to the three of you. Mr. Cobb, I'll start with you. You've definitely made it interesting. You kept us on our toes. Um, I know you've been involved, in all seriousness, I know you've been involved with the community over the years that you've lived here, the Baseball Association, the Fire Department. And I think it's great that you got to be on council and, and take that extra step to help the community. So I thank you for that. It's been a pleasure to work with you. So thank you, sir. But I'm still going to sit out there and come at you. That's all right. <laughs> um, Mr. Cook, you as well. Um, you know, Mr. Cook had been on council in years past in other communities, and he was the mayor, I guess, long before I was probably around. Um, you've been around for a while, but again, uh, thank you for all you've done for the city. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you as well. Well, also to expand upon what uh, Mike passed on, the law director has recommended that since both Peggy and I's replacement have not been seated, we will be seated at that meeting uh, in January, and uh, we will serve until our replacements are selected. So that's the only other thing I'm going to say, other than the fact that it's been quite an experience in serving with Mr. Cobb. It's been very enjoyable. 
there have been many instances of which, I guess the word is a contentious <laughs> situation, but consequently, I would have liked to seen him serve another four years in order to keep this council under control. <laughs> I understand his health issues and consequently, I know he's going to be out there in the audience and maybe there may be more than one of us out there also. And Mr. Eggleston, thank you for all you've done. It's, it's, it's really been neat because we've got a pretty, pretty diverse council as far as men and women and a nice different set of age groups. And you know, to you, Mr. Vice Mayor, you come up with, you know, for someone who's in the age bracket you are, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I just called you old. I, you, <laughs> you, I, I don't know, you tend to sometimes think that you'll get a lot of great ideas from, you know, a younger person who's in their, you know, teens or 20s or 30s or so, but he, you come out with a lot of great ideas, I think, over the years, and I appreciate, I, and I mean that seriously. It's not in a line, it's, I mean, you're a pretty sharp guy and you come up with some great ideas and, and it was, again, nice having you on council. So thank will, you. Will that, then, a buck and a half get me a cup of coffee yeah, down there? It will. <laughs> and Peggy, thank you for all the help you've done. The idea of both of you coming up with uh, the uh, meet the, or not meet the can, it's like the uh, coffee and donuts with council. I think that was a really good step in the right direction for the community to be transparent and open with our citizens and council. So thank you for that idea. And uh, thank you for being on council. Uh, I know you'll be seated for maybe a meeting or two in January till the replacements are, are decided. But uh, thank you for all you've done. So well, appreciate it. It's definitely been different. Mr. has made sure that every meeting. <laughs> all right. I'm here. She said you made it interesting. She says she likes you. <laughs> <laughs> she wants your phone number. Uh, <laughs> She won't. <laughs> I, I think all in all, this council has brought back to the people the fact that we as individuals have worked for the betterment of the city and not for ourselves. I think this has been one of the paramount things. There's been less animosity. Um, and I'll even say backstabbing, that has been predominantly in some of the previous councils. And to me, we've had our differences, but we have been able to solve these differences. And I think that we've got the city on the road to, and I won't call it recovery, <coughs> but the possibility of becoming where it should be. Well said, sir. All right, Mr. Cobb. I want to say it's been interesting and it's been fun. Uh, I'm glad to see this council has worked together. And we're all human. We're not going to make, not everybody's going to agree upon everything. And I've given Mr. Bridge a rough way to go a few times, and I have you. But hopefully, with Mr. Lindsay coming in and when they fill the other two seats, whoever it may be, the council can still work together. And and I appreciate the time on here and who knows, maybe down the road I may come back. I don't know. The sequel. Don't you threaten us like that. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you threaten us like that. <laughs> All right, anything else, council? I would like to thank Ron, Bill, Peggy for your service. Um, you guys have come up with some good ideas. Yes, Ron, you've made meetings interesting. Um, and uh, I wish you all well. Anyone else? Oh, and Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> yes, that was me my last. Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope all of you have been good and get everything you wish for for Christmas. Uh, uh, Derek. Uh, the money for the CHIPS fund? Oh, yeah. So, um, we'll quick announcement. There's, uh, we do have, uh, we did get approved for our CDBG grant uh, to build the new shelter. So, we will have a new shelter house coming in 2022. Uh, also, we were, we did receive the funds for the CDBG CHIP grant. Uh, so, we will have programs. Uh, this is all administered through the county. 
uh, but will be available for our residents um, uh, in early 2022, coming soon. So as soon as we get the information as far as applications uh, and, and the uh, uh, qualifications, we'll get that out to the public as soon as possible. Great. Thank you, sir. Good update. Thank you. Anyone else? And we will need a motion. So good, Jerry. Second. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Eggleston for adjournment. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to adjourn except 7-0. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs>